God is not a respecter of any man or any title of a man. You either serve God or leave him. God is a jealous God. He does not want to serve him and serve yourself or serve the devil. He doesn't want to serve him and serve your mind and your intellect. God hates it. Everything that man is, God made you. And everything he said to you to do is for your own advantage, not for his good. If you obey God, you don't do God any good. You only do yourself good. Why should God be like that? Because he's a jealous father. Get ye out from among them. So that you can experience the power of God in, in, in your existence now. All the grace God has given. So now, we are looking at the condition precedent and we will go forward. I remember yesterday I told you <clears throat> that you should, you should, um, you should, <clears throat> you should pray some scriptures, which is John 15, 1, to 1 and 2, and recognizing that he said in verse 2 of John 15, he cuts off every branch that does not bear fruit. Every, every, <clears throat> every, every, uh, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So, and then he says in John chapter 15, verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruits that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask. So your fruit bearing life determines God hearing you. Am I talking to you? You remember we said that. You want God to hear you anything you say. Bear fruit. But then to bear fruit, he went for that to say to us. In that 16 verse of chapter 15. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit. And the fruit that will last. Then in verse 4 to 5, it talks about how you can bear fruit. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. So your bearing fruit is, you know, is determined by how much of God that, you, your, that is in you. You must remain in him. To bear fruit, you must remain in him. You can bear fruit, the way to it is just remain in Christ. In other words, anything you do, judge it by Christ. Am I talking to you? <laughs> but then he says that's a benefit for anyone who bear fruit. The Father will listen to you. The Father will, will prune you to be more fruitful. But the Father will hear what you're asking. You can speak on behalf of God on earth, it shall be so. You see, let me say this. There are some people who believe that by going to the mountain and fasting with empty belly until they have ulcer, that's when they have authority. I told you, God is no more on the mountain. He said to the woman of Samaria, he said, the time is coming that people will not watch me on the mountain again. You say prayer mountain, prayer mountain is your heart. It's not the mountain you go. If you go to a mountain place to pray, God does not answer prayer on the mountain. Let it be known. There is no place where God answers prayer by the sea, by the mountain, in the wilderness, people go there because they need their tranquility so that they can concentrate. That's what your prayers will be had in any atmosphere where you can totally concentrate in your spirit to God. So if you go to the mountain, know that it's not the, it, God is not in that mountain. God is inside you who went there. But it's a different thought with many people. They go to man. I've been in several meetings. And ministers, when I do ministers, they say, Apostle, tell us the secret of how, why, why is the Lord Jesus appearing to you? And the secret of how God is using you and stuff like that. And they expect me to give them, you know, human beings lot like to suffer. To give them some conditions that if you can fast for 21 days without, with empty belly and just keep praying, Father, 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 Father. Ah, you get it. If I told them that they would do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> they would do it. They would say, yes, that is it. But when I tell them that, you want me to tell you the truth? They say, yeah. 
You must have gone through, you must have paid a lot of price. I say, yes, I paid price. <laughs> My price is this. The father told me one day, do you know I love you? I said, Lord, why? He said, you love my son. I was shocked. Oh, I love the Lord Jesus. I love him to tears when I talk about him. I love him so much. That is what got my heart and mind and my behavior to other people. Because I love him. I will not be the one who will do something that will drive someone away from Christ. No, you won't find that with Alfred. I would rather leave the sleeping dog to keep on sleeping on his death than for me to wake that dog up. If waking the dog up will make him turn away from the Lord. And I will not spare you the truth that he had taught us in the scripture. Whoever you may be, president or no president, it's nothing to me. When it comes to sharing the word of God, you, you only hear what he said from me. I said, so you do the same thing and you begin to see him. At least this friendship, you know, everybody visits their friend, isn't it? But not every friend you visit, isn't it? But you are a friend to many people. But some friend will invite you to their home, you say, okay, all right, I will think about it. Isn't it? But their friend will not invite you and you are passing by, you knock their door. Oh, I was just passing by, I think I should visit you. Those are very dear friends, you know? So that's what you do to Jesus. You don't want to do anything that someone will speak against your friend legitimately. That is the road to power. When I was doing crusade in Nigeria, God raised the dead. Medically certified dead. I never fasted one day. That, that's my wife. All the intercessors will come, they say they want to pray over the night. It's following day. I say, okay, pray. I'm going to sleep. Because I have a friend who I talk to every time, not when I have crisis, I go to him. I just love him. Wake up in the midnight and look for him. And he's never told me, I'm not there. In the day, talk to him all the time. Talk to him like your friend. Call his attention to what is going on. When, I told you when the man resigned, the first one I consulted is the Lord. And the Lord told me that, you know, Satan blew up. He, he, he went past that. But the Lord told me that they are still going to bring it back. But he went before his time. And so the man nailed him. Okay? Friendship with Jesus. And this is what the Lord says. And this is what Scripture says. For to, for this is to my Father, Father's great, that you bear fruit. Show yourself to be what? My disciple. So if you are really born again, you must bear fruit. You must bear fruit. And if you bear fruit, that is an evidence that you are in him and he is in you. That's the evidence. Because without him, you cannot bear fruit. So if a Christian bears fruit, it's because Jesus is the one in you bearing that fruit. Because you allowed him to be in you. You don't control your body anymore, but he controls your body. I was saying this just a few, few minutes ago with those who are with me in the green room. You know, when you are in Christ, if you decide to do something that Jesus doesn't like, he will speak to your ear, don't do that. He won't permit you. If you dress in a way that is not in line with his will, he will speak to your ear. You will hear his voice. I mean, he has great sense of humor. Sometimes he laughs. I told you yesterday now, didn't I? I come on, did you remember when the Lord laughed in my ear? And I can tell that this is not a laughter of friendship, you know? This is your friend. You know when he laughs and he's happy? And you know when he laughs and his laughter is warning? You see, that's what he says. If you bear fruit because it is he in you bearing the fruit. Hallelujah. So, which means that you and I, we don't have much, much thing to do. Only need to be in him all the time. So that he can bear the fruit through us. Similarly, miracles. Miracles. Healing. Jesus never healed every sick in Israel. He went into a place, and the Bible says that he could not do much miracle. That was the place of his birth. 
Sometimes he went, he went in John chapter 5 to, 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 to Bethesda, and there are many blind and lame there. He went just to one man who, who has a poor palsy and raised him up, and he got out. He left the others like that. Why? He does what the Father do. He says, I do what I see my Father do, John 5, 19. So, who now can claim that it is his anointing that he'll seek? They are all liars. It is the Lord that heals the sick through us. Am I talking to you? I will soon be over. Therefore, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Look at the book of Galatians chapter 5. The fruit. Understand that each time the, the, the Bible talks about fruit, Jesus talks about fruit, he's talking about singular fruit. <laughs> Amen, isn't it? He didn't say the fruits of the Spirit as to meaning many. He says the fruit as to one. I would gather now. But come on now. How can we marry that with Galatians chapter 5, verse 22? But the fruit, he still repeats it, of the Spirit is what? Love, let's count it when I say it's one after the other. Love, one. That is number one. Yes? Joy, number two, yes. Peace, number three, yes. Patience, number four, yes. Kindness, number five, yes. Goodness, number six, yes. Faithfulness, number seven, yes. Gentleness, number eight, yes. Self-control, number nine. Tell me the English that express fruit. Singular fruit, but the numeracy is... Nine. Can I help you understand that? Now, if you remember what I taught you on system thinking, if you apply the theories of system thinking to this, you will recognize. What he's saying is that it is one fruit, but it manifests in nine dimensions. Same thing. <coughs> when you need love, it manifests it. When you need joy, it manifests it. When you need peace, it manifests it. When you need patience, it manifests it. Kindness, it manifests it. Self-control, the same fruit manifested. Because what? That fruit is manifested by Jesus that dwells in you. Now my question is, how much Jesus dwells in you? If you say you are born again, how should Jesus test you that you have allowed him? By making someone provoke you sometime. And see how much you will manifest that fruit. So, if the person provokes you and again he provokes you and again he provokes you and again he provokes you and, provokes you and then you are wind up, then you say, okay, you pass three and fail four. Then he will give you another provocation test that will be greater than the former one. To six times to push your limits up until it gives you to 15 times to push your limit up until you now die to yourself you know what makes us angry we are still alive to our flesh so in our journey as christians we go through various phases of this grace Love, that cannot be overemphasized. Joy, it cannot be overemphasized. Peace, I've told you, be at peace with all men and what? Be, be what? Ah, it's in Hebrew. I told, you, I, told, I told you that yesterday, isn't it? Chapter 12, verse 14. Make every effort to live in peace with all men. And what? Be holy. And then, without... Hey, somebody speak over there. Without what? Holiness. No one shall. You want to see Jesus? Then be holy. You want to see angels? Come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be then be holy. <laughs> and be at peace with all men. If you want to fight, go to um, this, our brother in England. Um, 
Anthony Joshua. You want to fight? Go to Anthony Joshua and take him up. Money will come to Christ with Tabernacle. <laughs> I hope Anthony Joshua is hearing me. But the fact is that in this church, I don't have anyone who fights anymore. I used to be a boxer in those days. But now God had called us to peace with all men. Why? Because it is the only way to see God. Imagine, without faith, no man shall what? Please God. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, no one shall please God. But now, without holiness, no one shall see God. So you can operate in faith and please God, but you are not operating in holiness and you can't see him. That's why not every faith preacher see Jesus. Not every faith preacher see Jesus. Do two, 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 two things. So therefore, understand that you can manifest the fruit of the Spirit, all this fruit of the Spirit, by being conscious of Christ all the time. Before I stop today, because you started late today, that's why uh, I, I said that I will prolong you to quarter two, so that I can cover much. So now, you see that Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 33. Write them down like an almanac and paste them by your bed. I went to God now. Every day, judge yourself by uh, how much love have I in my heart? How much joy? How much of the peace of God? How much of patience? Especially when you are going to the office, in the office environment, let me tell you something. One of the ministers in uh, in uh, um, in Ireland, Republic of Ireland, you know, we're in Kasuba. So in Kasuba, we had a meeting, and there's a case in Kasuba to test law. The case of a young man who is an Anglican, but he's a teacher. And somebody among these teachers came to him and says, don't call me here anymore. And he said, he gave him another word to call him. And the boy said, I cannot call you that. You are not a woman, you are a born man. All right? In Ireland, you know, Republic of Ireland. And so, they took him up in law. And then, he said, you should call him she. They took him up in law, and then, you know, they gave him a sanction not to go to school, but he broke the sanction. And when he broke the sanction, they now gave him a fine of uh, 6,000 pounds every day he breaks his sanction. And they first put him in, in, in detention, jail. And they said that the jail they put him made him a popular man. All right? Because the whole country began to talk about this boy when they put him in jail. So they removed him from jail, and then they gave him, you know, a sanction. But he would break it. And so the court fee continued to, to grow. You know, we go to the place where, <laughs> where, where, where nobody can pay. And the boy continued to go there. But he stopped his work and he stopped his salary. And they asked me that, what, what do you think should be done to that man? Of course, the cap of a lawyer, very easy. Take him to the European Court of Justice. Under direct effect. And section 9, 14, and 15 we work for him. And that decision can be overturned. So, that's sealed. But, they asked me, if I was the one, now let me talk about if I was the one. If you come to me yesterday, and I address you as he, if you come today and say you are she, I will say she, oh. <laughs> Even when you don't want to hear, she, she, I'm calling you. You forgot you are she? Ah, I'm calling you. Let me say something to you. That has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. It's not kingdom business. What about kingdom business? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You go into the power of God and cause she to come. When she sets his eyes on you, the demon in him will get out of him. She, I will be your friend. Not boyfriend. 
our meal at peace which i will invite you for lunch for dinner so that i can be seeing she and repeating you she each time i call you she something will strike in your mind that you are not she <laughs> hallelujah and one day you eat with me when the power in me will manifest and demons are operating and say you she come out of him At least the name people give you is what you call them. In a short time, some people will come in and tell you that call me cat. Don't worry. Cat! <laughs> <laughs> you call it loud, serious. Cat! I'm calling you. Because, I mean, <clears throat> you cannot be charged for calling that name loud. So if I call you cat too, if I tell you that I've changed my name, born of God. You must call me born of God. If you don't, I sue you. I sue you too. So, those things are irrelevant. They are things that face us daily and they will increase. Insanity will increase. And the people of God need to know the cure to it. Call me she or call me them. You are them because they are legions that dwell in that vessel. Uh, when Jesus said, what's your name? He said, we are legion. And a person said, call me them. They. They. Uh -huh. So they are legions. So call him they. But one day, that day, we get out of this body. Amen. So simple. Draw close to them so that you can get rid of that devil in there. Okay? However... In closing, let me tell you this. You and I, in this wasting world and confused global, in this, I will call it global confusion, or where you have a lot of confusionists globally, what is your obligation? Which is your legal responsibility? It's the book of Romans 8, 12 to 14. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation. Obligation. Let me tell you, what is the obligation? But it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. That's your obligation. The next verse. For if we live according to the sinful nature, we will die. That is sanction. Okay? If you break this obligation, the sanction is death. This so that sin it shall die. But it's not talking about just eternal death. It's talking about even physically. He said, but if by the spirit, that is capital letter spirit, you put to death the misdeed of the body, you will live. Hey guys, am I awake? Am I awake? What is obligation? Let me read to you what obligation is. Well, this dictionary tells me that it's a noun, an act or course of action to which a person is morally or legally bound. I told you that before, didn't I? Come on now, didn't I? When I was teaching you about delusion. Do you remember? You have an obligation. You are bound by God to put to death all the things of the flesh. I am bound by God not to kill somebody. The same way that I can, if you say that I should kill somebody because he provoked me to anger, I will, I will refrain from killing that person, one, because of God and the laws of man. If you kill with malice are foretold, you are condemned for murder. No two languages. If it is in Texas, America, your people can as well get ready for a funeral of your dead body. Come on now. This is the gravity of sanction that can lead to death. And this Bible tells you and I, 
If you live according to your sinful nature, everything your nature wants, you give it, you will die. So what should Christians do? Run away from it. Don't die before your time. Just don't die before your time. If by the loss of man in Texas, you kill and you are, you are a dead person, how much more by the loss of the sovereign God? Who wants you that if you gravitate towards your sinful nature, you are looking for death. Oh, this is what they do in England. You follow them. If you are born again, I'm so sorry. Yes, you are looking for death. You see, but if... So, the obligation we have is not to the sinful nature. To live according to it. For if we do so, we will die. But if by the Spirit of God, not by own help, but by depending on the Spirit of God... And, 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 you know, uh, sensitizing your mind all the time by the Spirit of God. Not what you hear on television or what you hear all the rubbish on, on social media. But this is the God Almighty who does not change. You have many churches today who tell you that you can, you can do whatever you like. The blood of Jesus atoned for you. He had done that once. The rest one is judgment. Every condition for supremacy of Christ for you. He says if you continue in the faith. They won't read that to you. Because they have made up their mind to have all their riches and wealth and enjoy the world. They know their end is fire, lake of fire. It's a pity. But don't follow them. Then he says because those who are led by the spirit are God's sons. Let me read this to you very quickly. The danger of, bearing, of not bearing fruit. Matthew 7, 16 to 20. By their fruits, you will recognize them or you know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bush or fig from thistles? Or likewise, every good tree bear good fruit. You see what I told you before. The test of your born again is your fruit bearing life. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Yeah, I mean, this is so direct. You, it cannot. You, you if, you, if you try, you can't. Because the one inside you will not permit it. Are you getting me now? <laughs> Are you getting me now? Go and sit in television, in a film house. The money you use that you sweat, God pay you. Hey, they are doing uh, John Wayne. You go and pay to look at the liar, acting a liar, kissing a liar, is he angels you go and watch in those films? No, no, who do you think is behind those things? No, what is those films promoting? Promiscuity. 